What's up, Tejas? I'm here today at Harris County General Store Barbecue uh, with the owner, my friend, Daniel Hinojosa, also known as Danny Tamales. Danny Tamales, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> so thanks for having us here. You brought me out this beverage that is so delicious. We're gonna talk about that in a little yeah. bit and also about your food. But um, first I wanna know a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, you were telling me like you danced for the Rockets or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me like what's your background and what led you to open this restaurant? So, um, you know, first of all, as always, it's always good to talk to you. I appreciate you coming out today. And uh, so background, uh, I've got a very diverse work history, of course. Uh, uh, professionally, I've, I've been an HR administrator, an Oracle database programmer. Uh, my degrees in graphic and web design. Uh, I've been the uh, City of Houston's webmaster for six years. Uh, that was my last full-time job. I've built houses as a construction superintendent. So I've got a, a wealth of, of uh, professional experience, which helped, uh, of course, when uh, we did the uh, remodel of this building. So I was able to do most of the work and coordinate most of the work myself, saving us a lot of money yeah. on, on hiring a, a project manager or contractor. Look at this. I'm glad I wore my stretchy pants today. Oh, hey! Oh, wait, wait! Hey, y'all. So, we just got some food. Obviously, it looks amazing, and we're gonna try it in a little bit. Um, but before we get to that, I need to know about you being a rocket dancer. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So tell me about that. Sure. So uh, back back in, I want to say the, um, oh gosh, it was during the Yao Ming, Tracy McGrady era, uh, 08, 07, 08. There was three amazing seasons that I worked for the Rockets. And the Rockets had a group uh, called the Tundra Dancers. Um, ironically, you know, it was a bunch of fat guys dancing around. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and believe it or not, I was the smallest guy on the squad. So we had some really big guys. And... Uh, my jersey, our, our jersey numbers were our weights. Oh my gosh. Yes. So and it's really cool because in the annuals of the NBA, I have my number listed on the roster with the Houston Rockets. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, so it went that far because we were issued actual NBA numbers. Oh, wow. So, so we did full, you know, during the games, we did our shenanigans, uh, help in game promotions and things like that. Yeah. But the coolest thing is every, uh, every game during a timeout, we went out and did a dance on the court. <laughs> And uh, so that. Yes, we need some footage, and then also maybe you can show us some dance moves in a little. Oh, bit. of course! I'm all, I'm always down to show up my sweet moves. <laughs> What's your background sure. with like cooking and stuff? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm guessing, maybe I'm wrong, that you participated in like cook-offs, sure. like maybe the barbecue cook-off right. or the Houston rodeo or something like that. So how this all got started. So uh, of course, you know, my dad growing up, dad taught me how to make a brisket. That's where it starts. Um, backyard barbecues, uh, growing up here in East End, Denver Harbor area, here in Houston. Uh, and from there, we, we just, just the love of cooking started. Uh, it really started at the Texans tailgating uh, experiences. So myself and a group of friends uh, back in uh, 2007, we started tailgating for all the games. And before you know it, uh, we just, uh, we became one of the most popular uh, tailgating experiences in the blue line. Yeah. So we actually won tailgater of the game uh, oh, wow. one, one, one season. So um, and it just started from just cooking uh, burgers and cooking chickens, briskets, ribs, and things like that. Yeah. It just grew and grew and grew. Then that started into our cook team, which was Texas Cyclone Cookers, which uh, we, we participated in uh, the rodeo cook-offs a yeah. few times. Uh, all throughout Texas, got to go out and, and uh, compete in Lockhart, uh, West Texas, all those, uh, some really good spaces out there, yeah. competitions, and met a lot of fun people along the way. Yeah. And that's just where it's, it started. And I guess you can say back in 2016, it went pro as I started uh, catering and whatnot. And it just got, it just grew and grew and grew. And then here we are. Yeah, yeah. So um, what would you say, like from your cook-off days, uh -huh. what was like your award-winning thing that y'all had? Our, my chicken won every time. 
chicken one, our ribs came in. As you can see, our, 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 our ribs are amazingly good. And our brisket is no slouch either. So yeah. there's always the Texas Trinity. Those, those three things there, we do really well here. Yeah, I've never heard the Texas Trinity, but. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the, the, the big three. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, and then my last question before we move on to the second sure. uh, question. Did you design your logo? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so the logo is, um, his name is Hiccup. The, our bull. So he, he's got a few things on it, and uh, the bull is is quasi inspired by the old uh, Astro, Astrodome scoreboard. Uh -huh. So, but the real inspiration comes from uh, Astro World, which I worked at Astro World for, for a, a long time yeah. as a food services and a ride supervisor there, and um, <clears throat> overall operations of the park. So uh, Astro World had the Texas Cow Palace, and in the Cow Palace, they had this big giant bull on the base in the background, and he had these big sunglasses. So, so he's he's really the, the real inspiration behind our bull. Yeah. Well, I can definitely tell that you're very Houston proud. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how did you get the name of your Harris County General Store? Okay. So um, the name came about uh, just just kind of doing some. As, as I said, we're going pro. We were Texas Cyclone Cookers, which is a cook team. But we wanted to really become something just down home, that neighborhood uh, barbecue joint kind of thing. Yeah. So I did research and there wasn't a general store here in, in Houston or, uh, or Harris County. So picked up the name, secured the rights to it, and then uh, the rest is uh, barbecue history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to know like a little bit like about your menu, like mm -hmm. let's explore that a little bit sure. more. And then also, um, like maybe if you have any merch to sell too, because sure. those are pretty cool hats. Yeah, yeah. So um, on the merch side, we, we do have uh, some uh, merch coming very soon. But by the time uh, folks are viewing this, they can go to our website, hcgsbbq.com. Yeah, we need a discount code. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we can, we can definitely do that. Um, but the, the merch is, will be available very soon. Uh, we, have, we already have our barbecue sauces, we have our spices, I our rubs that. available. Yeah. Uh, and we also uh, have merch from different, so like I said, we've been on this trail, so we made a lot of friends, including the festivals that I run, the Tamala Festival Houston, uh, the different vendors that have merch. We, we will also have their merch available um, for yeah. sale on our website. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then tell me a little bit about like what people can expect when they come mm -hmm. and like order off of your menu. Sure. So so the, the, we we are definitely um, more of a barbecue restaurant than than the, the concentrate on the merch. So we just have a wide variety of just good down home Texas barbecue, as you can see here. Yeah. So this is like a tea. <laughs> and, and so the, the, the good thing is uh, we also have a Tex-Mex flair to all, all the food. Uh, the flavors are definitely flavors of, of the East End here in Houston, Texas, which is, uh, you know, I grew up here, um, you know, high school, been here most of my life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can definitely taste those flavors. But one of the good things, too, is I'm, I'm also very um, heart conscious and health conscious. So we don't put a whole lot of sugars and salts in our foods. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So, and um, tell me a little bit about like what we sure. have today. Okay, so let's start with, of course, we've got our, our, our famous uh, ribs. These are, uh, they're, they're um, the St. Louis cut, mm -hmm. and they're just, they're just meaty and delicious. So, and they're pork ribs, uh, we start with that, of course, and we have a half chicken on the menu every day. You can get a half chicken in two sides for, for less than $14. That's just unheard of yeah. in barbecue. And then we have our brisket, of course. Uh, over here we have our, our tender turkey breast, and we also have chicken breast available to where you can either get the chicken breast as a side dish or, or uh, on, your, on your multiple meat plate, the one, two, or three meat plate, or you can get a chicken sandwich. Uh, so that's one thing that we do have the option of if you know if anybody just wants a sandwich or they just want the plate with two sides they can grab that. Yeah. But but we also like I said we explore our Tex-Mex side. We have our crispy tacos here, which um, these are these are brisket tacos uh, topped with avocado salsa pico de gallo. Mm, yeah. So yum. that's on the meat side, and, yeah. and we and not shown here. We do have our pork belly and our pulled pork, uh, which uh, which will be available. Uh, by the time this airs, we will have it on the menu again. Yeah, that's so, a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of foods here. So, and then, <clears throat> I mean, the sides are good too. I mean, come on, you can't have good barbecue without good sides. So, we'll start over here. So, we have our, this is our corkscrew spiral mac and cheese. It's so cheesy, 
It's baked, and once it's done, we, we put it in the smoker, uh, top it with more cheese, and put panko crust uh, breadcrumbs on top of it and bake that in. Um, our baked potatoes are a little different. As you can see, we smash it for you. Anybody that orders a baked potato with us, it comes like this, of course, a larger size, and you don't have to do all this mixing. It's already done for you. Okay. Mama's beans, this is mama's bean recipe, so it's definitely uh, more like a uh, frijoles chavos. Yes. So we, we, we stick to that. Uh, we use the uh, jalapeno, the, 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 the sliced jalapenos, rajas, and most of the time they come with carrot, pickled carrot yeah. as well. Ilote. It's not East End without having uh, corn, uh, sweet corn dressed with uh, Valentina sauce and uh, yes. queso fresco. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. So, coming over here, we have our, our fresh potato salad, which is also mom's recipe. We've got our broccoli cheese rice, uh, of course, and here is what the regular corn looks like. And then this right here is one of my uh, fan favorites that, that I created a few years ago. It's a raspberry vinaigrette coleslaw. Oh, okay. So, Nice. I came here for your grand opening and mm -hmm. I was kind of sad because I totally missed the beans on the um, menu. So I'm glad that we have them today. Right. And, you know, usually uh, we, we make enough uh, to last the day what we expect, but sometimes, uh, you know, the crowd gets gets us first and uh, yeah. we, we do run out quite frequently. Yeah, I've seen that on your social media that you're yeah. like sold out. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when you know it's good whenever you're like, sorry guys, we got to close early. Yeah. We're sold out, yeah. So. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, obviously you've had your hand in like a lot of different um, places. You've met a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about like joining forces with other people sure. or networking. Um, maybe, you know, how do you find your customers sure. or, you know, just how do you join forces with others? You know, just, to, just being a good neighbor the, the, is the baseline of it. So. We're very fortunate with our location here. We're, we're, we're inside a neighborhood. You know, we're not on a shopping strip. We're not on the side of a freeway. So uh, we're very blessed to have actual families all around us for one thing. Yeah. So, and, and it's a really cool thing because we, we just invite them over to have, have lunch with us and it's on us. We take care of our neighbors because you know when we're not here, they watch over our building. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. So, but as far as the community itself, uh, we definitely, definitely believe in giving back. The community, um, you know, like my high school, Wheaton High School, which is in Fifth Ward, Denver Harbor, uh, the various high schools here in, uh, in the East End area, Kip High School right down the street. We're working with them to uh, provide some programs for the upcoming uh, school year. And we also have uh, fundraising opportunities for, for local schools <clears throat> to come to us and then we can work out uh, some kind of program to where we can help fundraise to fund their programs and whatnot. Yeah, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that you give back to the community. I have another friend that has a restaurant and they do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just really great to like have that like connection. To sure, the sure. And that's part of it. You know, I think um, a lot of times, you know, the, the way I see it is, you know, we all work hard for our money. We make X number of dollars per hour and we all have a choice to where we can spend those. Uh, if somebody comes to us and spends their, their like I said, their hard-earned money on a plate of barbecue, sometimes some folks that it took them an hour to make you know that 20 bucks mm -hmm. to come and have lunch with us so we got to make sure it's worth their yeah. time yeah. and uh, you know just like um, you know, Mr. Jim Good said that we're only as good as our last plate of barbecue so we cannot put um, a bad dish out yeah uh, everything is fresh uh, we, we make sure uh, that the, I mean, the quality of the meats is, is, is the best that we can find and we, we just we work very hard. We get here very early in the morning, about 5:30, to get yeah. started, and everything is made fresh every day. Yeah, I don't know when you sleep because I see you. <laughs> I see you up real early I, on your social media. And I'm right. up early and I'm up late, so I sleep in intervals. Yeah. So, so I you know, two hours here, a little cat nap here and there, whatever. But yeah. but yeah, but you know this this is fun. I love doing this. Um, yeah. So uh, and the great thing is we we got the brand new building here and uh, we're, <clears throat> we're getting another chance to present our product once yeah. again. So, and, and we're off to a great start. Yeah. So what about like um, live music mm -hmm. or like entertainers? Are sure. you like planning to do that or have you done it already? We, we had one entertainer, entertainer so far, but we are planning on doing weekly, uh, a weekly uh, entertainment series uh, featuring some local talent, duos, uh, and every now and again, we'll get a little froggy. We'll do a, 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 a large scale band, uh, yeah. we, but we want to make sure, like I said, we want to be good neighbors too. We don't want to be a disturbance to right. families trying to enjoy their their living rooms, yeah. you know. So, yeah. so uh, our music does end at ten o'clock, 
Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we don't go to all hours of the night. So yeah. like I said, we just want we want to be good neighbors too. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you need a singer, I wasn't choir for like well, a really long time. Well, you know, any time. You, know, <laughs> you sing, I'll dance. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. You got we it. We will make a great Man, we got this. We got this. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and let's talk a little bit about attitude. Like, obviously, you know, I've known you for a while, and ever since I met you, like, you just have a really great attitude. Um, you always seem happy. I'm sure you have bad days too. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like everybody. But, like, how do you keep a really great attitude mm -hmm. um, while you're trying to open a new business? Sure. I know that you have been through a lot, especially yeah. this past year right. because of the pandemic. Right. So how do right. you keep that well, attitude? Well, one thing, just like you, like you mentioned the pandemic, you know, you you uh, supported me during that. You, when I was selling tamales literally out of the trunk of, out of an ice chest on the back of my truck, uh, just to keep things moving. Um, and, you know, thank you. And thank everybody else for, for doing that. Yeah. No, thank you for the amazing tamales. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it take to wake up every day uh, with fresh attitude? Um, there's a lot of people counting on me, for one thing. Um, our guests are counting on me. Uh, they're, they're, they're coming to us to, my, my whole thing is, it's an escape from everyday, from, from people's everyday routine. They come to lunch. Folks are at work, they may be having a bad day at work, they oh, I just want, I just want a brisket sandwich. It's gotta be good. Yeah. And um, if my attitude isn't right, uh, like I always say, if, you, if the food isn't good, you can't taste the love. Yeah. The food's gotta have the love. And, um, and you can definitely tell when Cook's not having a, bad, a good day. Yeah. So um, to be honest, you know, I, uh, I, mean, I have a lot of adversity, but um, there's, I can't let that stop the overall mission, yeah. which is to you know, make this building a successful. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of people counting on me. And my, my employees are counting on me for their livelihood. So if I don't do my job, you know, they can't do theirs. Yeah. And, um, even with the festivals, if I don't do my job, there's literally hundreds of people who won't be able to make a, a living on those days. Yeah. So, <clears throat> like, and, and, and it's something that uh, I value that, and I and I don't take lightly. And uh, and and I love the idea or the fact that people trust me. Number one, for lunch. Um, I mean, who wants to go to a place to have a bad lunch? Yeah. No, so no. yeah, <laughs> you, know, you get it ruins your day. I don't want to ruin your day. But you know, I. I just, just to sometimes you gotta shake it off and um, forget about the negative, and just focus on the positive things and uh, focus on the solutions. Yeah. Um, if, you know, somebody comes to me with a problem, I'm gonna solve it. If they don't want me to solve it, don't come to me with a problem. Okay. Well, I will bring problems to you. Yes. Solve. I'll solve all. I'll, I'll solve everything. I got, I got a wheel that I just spin and <laughs> yeah. it just says, "Get it done." <laughs> Get her done. Get her done. <laughs> um. And then, like, what's the secret to making a really awesome brisket? Mm -hmm. I tasted your brisket tamales are, like, amazing. And, like, your brisket, I just love mm -hmm. it. So, like, what would you say is the secret to making an amazing brisket? Love, 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 love. Um, it takes time. Um, it takes, just like a good relationship, it takes time, heat, and a lot of passion. So, I like that. so um, <laughs> you can't rush it. Uh, the, the wood has to be right. The pit has to be clean. Uh, can't cook on a dirty pit. You clean it with an onion? No. Okay. No, and, and, and uh, it's funny you mention that. We, we, I used to, but we, we no longer put onions in the fire or clean the pit with an onion because there's a lot of our guests who have uh, allergies to onions. Oh. So that way we keep the brisk or the meats kind of pure. And if you know other guests want onions, we have them on the side. Yeah. So that's part of keeping you know, yeah. the, the foods uh, the way they're supposed to be yeah. in a natural state. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but you know, time, it takes a lot of time and it takes the effort. You know, sometimes you know the you got a stubborn brisket that just doesn't want to cook, and you you got to fire up the pit just a little bit more and make take two or three more hours. Even though you're ready to go to bed, that brisket's not. Yeah. So you got to stay stay with it and grab that brisket. It's just like a stubborn bull, a little yeah. donkey. And you you <laughs> got you got to break it, and then yeah. uh, and then it does happen. Yeah. Um, I did not know that there was an onion allergy, but I'm gonna start using that because I do not like onions, so I'm just gonna be yeah. like, I'm allergic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, in, in, in cooking, you know, we, we definitely uh, advise folks, to tell us what your allergies are, we can tell you what, what exactly is and what, but we do keep, uh, we try to keep the foods as natural as possible, and yeah. we don't add a whole lot of this, a whole lot of yeah. that into it. 
So, but on the other side, a lot of people say, oh, we need more salt. Why have salt available yeah. if you want to salt it up? Yeah. So, and uh, like I said, we keep the salt, the sugars low. Yeah. Because, you know, some people, a lot of folks around here in our neighborhood have high blood pressure. Yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to bring my dad here because he'll be like, oh yeah. my God, this is great for my diet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm, I'm re really conscious about health these yeah. days because after going through the COVID thing, I'm re really watching. I have to really watch what I do and eat. Yeah. Or you know, I could flare up and have a have yeah. an episode. Yeah. We don't want that. No, no, no. People and then we biscuit. won't have your like amazing food. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be out of commission. Like, yeah, I'm taking. I'm, <laughs> I gotta take a week off. Um. So we're gonna move on to the second part of our interview, and that is where um, I'm gonna ask you some trivia. Sure. It's our uh -oh. Texas trio. I, I, I didn't know like, there was a test. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you're gonna be good at this though, so it's gonna be okay. So what you'll do is pick uh, uh, three questions. Okay. You can pick your first one and read it all out. Okay. <laughs> this is like uh, Price is Right. Yeah. Okay. This one's boring. Except you're not gonna win any money. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry you didn't say there was reading involved, so I don't have my glasses. <laughs> so I've got to do it like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I so, can read it to you. So it says, do you know how to squeeze? Squeeze your, I, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> read it, it's too small. Hold on. Do you, <laughs> squeeze, do you know how to squeeze? No. Do you know how to square dance? <laughs> <laughs> Show us. Like I said, I don't have my glasses, so. Um, so do you know how to square dance? I think I do. Okay. Uh, I remember back in elementary school, it was, it was kind of the common uh, curriculum yes. we, on Cinco de Mayo, we all had to do the the, the dance, uh, yes. the, the folklorical dances. Yeah. Dress up, everybody. All the guys have to wear black pants and white shirts. And oh wow! All the all the girls have to get. Oh uh, my gosh! Dressed up with well, flowers and everything. That's funny. But I do remember Square Dance Day. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I think what we'll, we'll, we'll do magic. I think it was something like this, or uh, yeah. And then, that looks, uh, yeah, that uh, looks uh, good. And then then something like this. <laughs> I think, yeah. did I do it? Is uh, that it? I don't know, y'all. <laughs> y'all let us know. <laughs> all right, pick your next one and I'll, okay. read, it. I'll right. read it out loud. You gotta let me know next time, so I'll bring my glasses. Okay. How many Texas cities have you visited? Oh, wow. Um, a lot. Um, you know, like I said, during during the competition days, I we went to a lot of, a lot of cities. So I, Definitely have been to Central Texas, most of the cities there. Um, I went I went to Lubbock uh, once for a, for a business meeting. So I, I mean, it, it's got to be 20 or 30. Yeah. yeah, it's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was your like top favorite Texas city? Besides, well, yeah, well, besides Houston. Well, um, no doubt Lockhart. Lockhart. Lockhart, okay. Texas, it's only because. You've got the, some of the, well, you have the best barbecue in Texas right now there. You've got, you know, Kreitz, uh, Smitty's, and just a, a few other mom and pops there. Yeah. And that's where you, you can taste the Central Texas inspiration in our food. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Yeah. You know, just uh, some good salt and pepper, and the wood does the rest of the work, and the pit, and we just put a little bit of our seasoning on top of it, but those the seasoning doesn't dominate the flavors. But. Yeah. I'm going to have to take, like, a barbecue tour. Yes, soon. yes. Okay, pick your third one. Okay, what is the highest point in Texas? The highest point in Texas, I believe it is the, I don't know what they call it now, the Williams Tower, Transco Tower. Um, highest natural point. Oh, so you gotta be more specific, because <laughs> uh, you know, like I said. Yeah. I mean, Williams Tower is pretty high, that probably is. It is, it is the tallest building in Texas. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Uh, okay, see? there you oh, go. Yeah. We're gonna add that to the trivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is the highest point in Texas? Um, I think on 610 near, um, Washington, at, no, 610 at, at East, or 610 near Kirby by, by Energy Stadium, where all the traffic gets together and it just makes a big old mountain. <laughs> that, is, that is the That's highest a, point in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. Our traffic yeah. is like out of control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you said highest point, not highest point of frustration. Sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Guadalupe Peak. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, uh, that was my next, I was going <laughs> to say that next. next. next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is the conclusion of our yeah. interview and trivia. Um, actually, I'm learning things from you that I didn't know. So I knew the traffic thing. 
obviously. Yeah, yeah and then I mean, Williams Tower too. Now. Yeah. Highest, highest yeah. building in, you know, in Texas. Yes. But thank you for You're having welcome. us here. And hey, thank, thank you, you for, for coming. Food. Yeah. And um, we're going to make sure that we drop this information down below so that you can come and visit and taste this amazing food. Um, get some merch when it's available online. Come, come listen to me sing and come dance. Yeah, that's but, worth that's worth the brisket sandwich <laughs> price right there. And let us know in the comments too, um, what's your favorite barbecue? We want to know, like your favorite barbecue item. What would you want from here? So we got to go y'all because we got to eat. I'm super hungry and this is just a tea. So bye. National Catfish Month. So I don't know about you, but I love me some fish and especially catfish. Like my dad makes the best fried catfish. I love catfish nuggets and I love to dip it in my mom's homemade tartar sauce. Amazing. So yeah, obviously you all know I'm not the best cook, but I will definitely eat your catfish if you make me some. So we're gonna go check out this fish market here hey. in Kima. And it's called Roses. It's a super awesome fish market. We're gonna show y'all a little bit of what they have to offer. So let us know guys in the comments, how do you like your catfish? Do you like it fried like me? How do you like it, Jenny? Fried, yes. <laughs> I've never been to anything like this. Right yes, yeah, so I'm kind of like, what is happening? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Bye! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe! Till next time, that's all y'all!